I knew that our Bible, this one, was written on the lunar calendar. Our calendar, the Western civilization calendar, is the Gregorian calendar from Pope Gregory of Rome. That means it's pagan in or origin. It's not God's calendar. Our calendar and the calendar of this book do not match. Sun God is for Sunday. Moon God is for Monday. That's a sermon for another time. Believe me, much of what Christianity salutes is pagan to its roots. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. Our next question is, please comment on Daniel 7.25 in regards to the Pope's changing the times. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto his hand until a time and a time and a dividing of a time. Well, I think you pretty much said it right there. Now, what you see is Pope Gregory did exactly that, and he, he asserted of the ecumenical power of the church to change the times, the days, the hours, the seasons. He changed everything. Now, Let's talk about it for a second. The Bible tells us, or Scripture tells us, you, and of course, trying to find this is difficult to do in a 66-book Bible. But when you compare what's happening in Hanok with what David the Psalmer said, you can see that the, the month begins with the dark moon. And then Hanok goes on to tell us that the 15th day of the month is the full moon. And he also tells us how we find the first month of the year. And so all of these passages are given, and what you typically find is that the first month of the year is going to be usually in March, although it can be in April, but usually it's in March. And so this is the first month, first month of the year, not January. The Julian calendar recognized it, and its first month also was in March. However, Scripture also tells us in Genesis 1 that the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first days. So, uh, but at any rate, you have a natural rhythm that any person can tell. And if you look in Genesis 1, there's no rabbi written in there anywhere. It says the sun, the stars, and the moon are given to you for signs, for the appointed feast, for days and for years. Did Pope Gregory use any of that? No, no, no. What we're going to do is... We're going to start the day at an arbitrary hour. You know, the middle of the night when everybody's asleep, that's when we'll start the day. Not at some point that you can see in nature, arbitrarily fixed. And we're going to arbitrarily fix the first of the year. And so he did seek to cha change the times and the laws. They did change the laws. They did change the times. Now, the question in that prophecy is time, times, and a half a time. How long is that? How long is that? That's a question. I would say that I'm not going to get into the time times and half time, but all I can tell you is, is that Gregory is the one who did that. And when you look at, if, if you want to just check and see, did Gregory affect the whole world? Well, go look at the New Year's Eve festivals and where they happened on New Year's Eve last year. They happened in Beijing. They happened in Moscow. They happened in uh, um, Sukarto. They happened in Sydney. They happened in New Delhi. They happened in Johannesburg. They happened in you know, Rio de Janeiro. They happened in Mexico City. All of it, New Year's Day, everybody celebrated Gregory's calendar based upon the day of the circumcision. Interesting. All right, our next question is, please comment on the Seventh-day Adventists. If Pope Gregory changed the calendar, how do we know that this seventh day that we see today is the correct seventh day? The other thing that we should remember, too, is that our calendar that we follow, including Seventh-day Adventists, is not only a calendar that was devised by the Catholic Church, but also it is a calendar that's based upon the solar year, not the lunar year. And the Jewish calendar that was observed in the time of Christ is it follows a lunar calendar, which is several days short of the solar calendar. So the great irony is that even the Seventh-day Adventists themselves are not worshiping on exactly the same Sabbath day as the Jews at the time of Christ because it's several days off now uh, having uh, 
switch to following the lunar calendar. Even the Seventh-day Adventists themselves are not worshipping on exactly the same Sabbath day as the Jews at the time of Christ because it's several days off now, uh, having uh, switched to following the lunar calendar. Spain, where Spain was occupied by both Moors, who were Muslims, and Jews. And it was pretty close to 50-50, and they were living together, sharing kind of almost the same faith. And the Pope said, no, that isn't going to work. And so he talked to a couple of Jewish people, namely Ferdinand and Isabella, into converting into Catholicism and conquering Spain for Europe. And this was almost 700 years after the Battle of Tours, where Charles de Hammer defeated 330,000 Moors in France. 700 years later, Ferdinand and Isabella come through, and they push the Moors out of Spain. And they issued the edict, the Alhambra Decree. The Alhambra Decree said anybody who keeps the Sabbath and anybody who keeps those seven feasts and anybody who teaches that biblical calendar as to how you find the Sabbath and how you find the biblical feasts, those people kick them out of Spain and no leaving with any of your money, no leaving with any of your property, no leaving with any of your jewels, but get out. Any of you that want to stay behind, you need to convert to Catholicism, but that's no guarantee we won't torture you or burn you at the stake. And so that those three ships of Christopher Columbus, also a Spanish Jew, filled those ships up with Spanish Jews and headed for the Caribbean on the 10th of August, 1492. So the church then began its inquisition in Spain, an inquisition that had already been in practice in Italy, an inquisition that had already been in practice in France, where they would come into villages and slaughter everybody in the village. They would torture people to get a confession, then burn them at the stake. There was no due process. There were no, there were no right to confront witnesses, no right to tell your side of the story. You got accused, then you got tortured, and then you were being excommunicated murdered. kings. Queen Elizabeth I was excommunicated. The first king of the Holy Roman Empire was excommunicated. Even Napoleon Bonaparte was excommunicated by the church. The church saying, well, if you're not going to kowtow to us, we will excommunicate you. Then we will call our, call our followers to go into a hysteric assault on wherever you happen to be until we kill you. Well, so it begs the question now, are they teaching the faith of scripture. And the Catholics themselves will tell you, no, we teach our catechism. Because in the Catholic world, the edicts of the Pope and the catechism are superior to scripture. But what about the Jews, you ask? Surely they would never miss track of the seventh day Sabbath. It is true that the Jews today worship on Saturday it is also true that they have not lost the concept of a seventh-day Sabbath. However, by their own admission, they deliberately set aside the biblical calendar, which was calculated by the phases of the moon. Quote, Declaring the new month by observation of the new moon, and the new year by the arrival of spring, can only be done by the Sanhedrin, in the time of Alil the second, fourth century AD, the Romans prohibited this practice. Hillel the second was therefore forced to institute his fixed calendar. End of quote. Citation: The Jewish Calendar Changing the Calendar. www.torah.org. Quote: Rabbi Louis Finkelstein a well-known scholar from the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, emphatically stated, the present Jewish calendar was fixed in the 4th century, end of quote. Citation taken from www.exposingtheenemy.com What we believe, does God have a calendar? Jewish confessions prove lunar Sabbaths. Quote, the new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. End of quote. Holidays Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, 
page 410. Quote, the months of the year were lunar and began with the new moon. End of quote. The Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, Calendar, page 631. Therefore, the claim that one keeps Sabbath on Saturday because the Jews keep it on Saturday does not prove anything since they themselves admit that the true calendar was set aside and replaced with the modern Jewish calendar. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. For people wanting to obey the Bible commandments, the question is, which is day one? All can count to seven, but where does the count begin? How can you know which is the true seventh day? The Creator who made the week also designed a month in which to place that week. The calendar of creation begins with New Moon Day, followed by four complete weeks. Each week contains six work days and a seventh day Sabbath rest. In the beginning, the Creator designed the movement of the sun and the moon to measure time. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, religious gatherings, and for days and years. Two great lights were set in the firmament of the heaven to rule over the day and over the night. Time can be measured only by movement. The movement of the sun measures a day in 365 and a quarter days, the sun and the earth return to the same relative position. This is one solar year. The moon's 29 and a half day rotation measures a lunation, which is the basis of the month. 12 and a third lunations are the same length as a solar year. There are three basic calendar formats using the movements of the sun and the moon. One solar, two lunar, three lunisolar. Number one, solar, the measurement of the movement of earth and sun. Solar calendars use the sun for measuring the length of the year only. Months of arbitrary length have no link to nature on the Gregorian solar calendar, weeks cycle continuously. Even leap day every four years does not disrupt the continuous weekly cycle. Lunar, the measurement of the moon's rotation. Lunar calendars are based strictly on the cycles of the moon. Months which begin the first dawn after conjunction cycle continuously without adjustment to the solar year. Because 12 lunations are 11 days shorter than a solar year, lunar months float through the seasons. Lunisolar, lunar months anchored to the solar year. The sun and the moon functioning together make a lunisolar calendar. Lunations are adjusted to the longer solar year by adding a 13th month seven times in 19 years. The weekly cycle restarts with every new moon. Each lunation has four complete weeks. The calendar established at creation is lunisolar. It is the most accurate and precise of all timekeeping systems. 
In scripture, each lunation starts with the celebration of a special day of worship, New Moon Day. New Moon Day starts with the first dawn after the astronomical new moon, also known as the conjunction. Six work days follow, and then a seventh day Sabbath on the eighth of the month. Three more weeks follow, ending on the 29th. Through measurement and calculation in the days leading up to the 29th, the time of conjunction is revealed so one can determine if the month has 29 or 30 days. No month ever has more than 30 days. The true loony solar calendar is very user-friendly. Days of the week always fall on the same dates of the month. Every time a seventh-day Sabbath in Scripture is assigned a date, it always falls on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th days of the month. Scripture states that the moon was created specifically to measure times for worship. He appointed, created, the moon for seasons, that is, worship times. Creation week ended with the Sabbath day's rest. Exodus 31 states that the Sabbath is to be kept throughout all generations. Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am your Maker, that doth sanctify you. The seventh day Sabbath was designed by the Creator to be the sign of loyalty between himself and his people. The enemy, Lucifer, has changed the civil calendar and stolen the worship due to the Creator. Through tradition and assumption, Lucifer has united the world in using a solar calendar with continuously cycling weeks. When one worships reveals whom he worships. All who use a solar calendar for calculating their days of worship are unknowingly giving their allegiance and worship to the great deceiver. Those desiring to show their allegiance to the Creator will worship him on the day he has designated. To find the correct day of worship, the loony solar calendar established at creation must be used. Scripture reveals that the calendar used for worship throughout all eternity will be based upon the new moon. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me. Whom do you worship? To whom do you give your allegiance? The calendar you use to measure time for worship reveals the deity you worship. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements, to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, 
and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil.